بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته وأقدى بهذه إلى يوم الدين uh, We are continuing the names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and today we are on name number 53 name number 53 which is the name الواسع سبحانه وتعالى the name الواسع سبحانه وتعالى the scholar said الساعة نقيض الضيق so ساعة is vastness it's the opposite of something being narrow and so the opposite of narrowness and what does this have to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or what does this have to do with the capability or the characteristic if uh, Allah, since Allah has the name al wasi why does that name fit him? We'll see that inshallah. Uh, Imam al-Jawhari says uh, al wasa wa sa is al jiddatu wa taqa capability and strength. So al wasa indicates that Allah has a tremendous amount of capability, a tremendous amount of strength, an infinite amount of both of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the linguistic usage of the word wusar, he says, min The one who has ability, let him spend out of his ability, let him spend as he can. min And so also linguistically, a uh, sa'a means something that brings a lot of benefit, or wasi'a, baytun wasi'a is a, a vast house, a large house, is a, is a house that brings a lot of benefit. And the Arabs would also use terms similar to this, where they would say something like, um, the tribe chieftain's tent is very large. They would say, his tent is very large, he has a wasi'a tent. Why? Because he's always hosting people. Why do you have to have a large tent? Because you invite people, you host them, and you're always giving a feast, and you're always honoring the guests, and you're always feeding the poor, and things like that. And so therefore, that shows the generosity, it shows the capability, it shows the strength, it shows the, the, the richness and the... Uh, ability of that chieftain to be able to do all of these things. So you can see how there's that linguistic connection between the word wasir and ability and strength and capability and all of those. Let's see how Allah Azza used the name al wasir subhanahu wa ta'ala. A few of these uh, uh, usages in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, uh, about the disbelievers, He says, Wasafi qarabiha. They are working hard, they are expending their ability to try to work against the masjid and to try to work against. Uh, to try to bring harm to the masjid. And uh, uh, and then so Allah Azzawajal says, uh, وَلِلَّهِ As a response to the fact that the disbelievers are working hard and expending their capability in trying to bring harm to the masjid, Allah Azzawajal says, whichever way that you turn, then you will find the way of, you will find the face of Allah. Allah Himself is all capable. He is wasi'. So he, he said that as a response to them using their sa'afi khalabiha, using their capability in trying to harm Islam and the person of the Prophet and the Masjid, so Allah Himself uses the word wasi'ah for Himself. Also, Allah says, وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ سَعَةً مِنَ الْمَالِ And so He says that the, they don't give much of, or they don't give a lot of the wealth. And Allah Azza then He ends the ayah, He says, وَاللَّهُ يُؤْتِي مُلْكَهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعُ عَلِيمُ as a response to the fact that they don't give much of their money, he, Allah responds and He says that He gives out of, He gives strength and ability to whomever it is that He wants. Allah gives kingship and power to whomever He wants and Allah is wasi'a and He is alim. So again, that all the ability, all of the power, all of the richness, all of the money belongs to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the reason that, you know, anybody would say, well, why did He use the word wasi'a for Himself here as opposed to any other word? Because he used the word wusr or wasir or some form of that for what they're doing. They're trying to expand their capability or they're not spending out of their capability. And so Allah Azzawajal, as a response to that, he says that he is wasir and so therefore you should spend out of your ability. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he says, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ When it comes to the issue of spending in the path of Allah, a shaytan promises that you will become poor. This is the promise of shaytan. You know, the, any fundraising comes up and people say, spend, spend money, give to the masjid, give to this charitable cause, give to this important issue, whatever it is. And shaitan comes and starts whispering, if you give the money, then you'll be poor, you won't be able to afford this, you will have difficulty paying your bills, you'll have all of these problems. Well, shaitan uh, And also shaitan orders you to do evil and disgusting types of sins. وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Allah promises forgiveness from him and extra bonus and more blessings. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعُنْ عَلِيمٌ Allah is wasi'ah 
He is vast, he is fully capable, he is fully full of power, he has all of the strength and ability and all of the money, and he is an alim subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, as a response to the fact that shaitan wants us to become narrow, he wants us to be narrow-minded and to keep our wallets closed, Allah Azzawajal uses the word wasi'ah, vastness, whereas shaitan wants, it to keep us, wants us to be closed-minded and closed-hearted and closed-fisted, Allah has really used the word vastness and blessing for himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see that comparison there. Similarly, in the fact that whenever there's a divorce, there's a split between the husband and the wife, immediately people start worrying about the money. Where's the money going to come from? How will I be able to spend? How will I be able to afford the bills? Now all of a sudden the expenses are increased so much more. We have all of these new expenses that we didn't have before. Allah Azza wa says, وَإِن يَتَفَرَّقَ يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلَّ مِّن سِعَتِهِ if, if they do decide to split, Allah Azzawajal will give to both of them out of His vastness. Allah Azzawajal will make both of them independent and will make both of them rich out of His vastness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kama Allahu wasa'an hakima. And Allah Azzawajal is vast and all encompassing and full of power and fully rich and full of ability. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is full of wisdom, hakim, and justice. Subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So again, you can see the duality. I, either the shaitan comes with the idea of narrowness or we get the fear of narrowness or there's something or the disbelievers come with that concept of narrowness and then Allah will respond to that with the concept of vastness and so therefore he uses the name wasi'ah for himself subhanahu wa ta'ala also um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ those who they, uh, um, they come with the sins and they come with all of these uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, those people who avoid all of the sins and they try to avoid all of the evil, disgusting type of sin, uh, types of deeds, except for some accident that they have in the lama, in Rabbaka wasar al Allah is vast in forgiving them because they're trying to avoid the sins as much as they can. So they are, yet they're doing ijtina of sins as much as they can, but sometimes they have some accident, sometimes they make some mistakes, or it's in, it's, um, uh, it's, it's some subconscious thing that happened, and so Allah Azzawajal wants the people to feel that Allah Azzawajal Himself is more forgiving and that He is vast in His forgiveness. So Allah says, In Rabbaka wasar al And so the scholar said that what does it mean specifically? I mean, we've already touched on this, but what does it mean that Allah Azzawajal uses the name wasar for Himself? That in Allah wasar an alim, that Allah Azzawajal is generous, that He is full of knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so therefore His generosity is combined with his full knowledge of the situation. And so therefore, if anybody was to ask the question, well, Allah is al-wasi, why doesn't he make me a billionaire? He could, he can, yes. But it's because he recognizes and has full knowledge of our situation. Therefore, based upon his full information and full knowledge of our situation, he gives us what we need and he gives us the exact amount. And he might even make our situation sometimes a little bit narrow or tight, but he is still al wasir Why? Because if we respond positively to that test, then Allah will rewards us more. And so therefore we get an extra reward and we get extra blessings for that, either in this life or more and more of that in the hereafter as well. And also, some of the scholars said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu wasir an alim, that Allah Azzawajal encompasses his creation that he gives and he is all-knowing subhanahu wa ta'ala about who it is that he's giving to and, the, and why and when and precise amount to give to all of his creation. And so also Imam al-Khattabi rahmahullah ta'ala, he says that his richness encompasses the poor. His richness encompasses the poor. So he says, uh, that his richness encompasses all of the poverty stricken of his slaves subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his rizq also encompasses the creation. And uh, And so therefore, uh, the, the Arabs, they would say, That sa'a, vastness, means independence. And it also means richness. And so therefore, That Allah Azza wa Jal gives, and He gives out of His vastness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, al wasa means power, and it means knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al wasa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers the creation because of his knowledge and his capability. So therefore, that uh, the scholar said that, um, uh, that because of his knowledge, because of his ilm, therefore he does extra and he does excellence to his creation. So his ilm leads to ihsan on his creation. 
The fact that Allah Azrael knows the details of all of his creation, therefore he does excellence to them, and all of this is part of him being al wasi'ah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah Azrael's wasi'ah, his vastness, his richness, his power, his generosity, encompasses and covers all of the creation. Whereas for the human being, of course, if, we, if a person is generous, it's not at all possible that any human being, no matter how rich he is, it's not possible that he can touch all of the creation. It's just not possible. Even the richest man in the world, he might only be able to positively affect a few people, a thousand people, a few hundred thousand people, even if he's that rich, right? But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, he is al wasi that his vastness and richness and power and generosity and capability covers all of his creation, the humans and the non-humans and the jinn and the angels, covers all of them subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Imam al-Subhani, he says that out of the fact that he is al wasi it shows that his mercy encompasses all of the creation and that his rizq covers all of the creation. And so, uh, there's so many different words, again, I've been throwing words out there as possible definitions. You can say he's vast in his greatness, in his power, in his kingship, in his excellence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then therefore, the scholars ask the question, well, what's the difference between wasi and ghani? What's the difference? I mean, we might get this question ourselves. What's the difference between wasi and ghani? If ghani means independence and richness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah really doesn't have any need for anybody, and that he is fully rich and fully powerful, then what's the difference between wasi and ghani? And the scholars, they said that, that Allah is... is it, the, the name al wasir is wider and vaster than the name Al-Ghani. Al-Ghani talks about his independence, it talks about his richness, it talks about his power, but Wasir also includes his goodness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It includes his mercy, it includes his rahmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are not meanings that are typically associated with the name Al-Ghani. So therefore, al wasir is a wider term, a vaster term, than the name Al-Ghani, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore, the, uh, Allah Azawajal teaches us to make this dua, Rabbana wa sa'ta kulla shayir rahmatan wa ilma. Out of the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, O our Master, you have encompassed everything out of mercy and out of your knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sa'ta kulla shayir, you have encompassed and covered everything in your mercy and love and also in your knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just for us to understand some of the meaning or some of the implications of al-wasir subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azawajal says, In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah azawajal says, that say if all of the oceans were turned to ink and all of the... Um, uh, so they would run out, all of this ink would run out before the words of my master subhanahu wa ta'ala would run out. Even if these oceans were doubled and more oceans were brought again uh, to back to up and to assist the oceans that were already there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says that if all of the trees on the earth and all of the oceans were turned to ink, and the trees were turned into writing utensils, and they were you. Ma nafidat kalimatullah. Allah's words would not end and would not finish. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is not only wasa in His richness, in His ability, in His power, also in His what He does, subhanahu wa taala. And so, what does it mean that not just the words of Allah, but also the ayat, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala? The blessings that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that he deals excellently with all of his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these things, his blessings, his dealings, the, the way that he deals with us, the way that he comes close to us, the way that he forgives us subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these things are included under the name al wasi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore there's no way that all of these things could, could finish. Uh, even though you might use all of the oceans and double the oceans and bring all of the trees as writing you as pens and pencils, there's no way that all of those blessings and ayat and the fadl and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will finish. Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Kalimatun jallat ala al ahsai wa ta'ad wa ta'adadu bal an hasri dil hasbani. He says that all of his words, everything that he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it cannot be counted. It is not possible even to count, it's, it's not possible to count or to calculate all of these things from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you were to bring all of the pencils and you would write all the time and keep writing and keep writing, you would not, be, you would not finish. 
And he says, وَالْبَحْرُ تُلْقَى فِيهَا سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ لِكِتَابَةِ الْكَلِمَاتِ كُلَّ زَمَانِ Even if you were to bring the oceans, the seven oceans, and turn them all into ink, and be writing continuously for all time, Allah Azzawajal's kalimat would not end. نَفَذَتْ وَلَمْ تَنْفَذْ بِهَا كَلِمَاتُهُ لَيْسَ الْكَلَامُ مِنَ الْإِلَاهِ بِفَانِ Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that all of these pens and the ink and everything would finish, but there is no way that the words, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would end. So, just a couple of more things, inshallah, and then we'll finish. Imam al-Qayyim, I'm sorry, not Imam al-Qayyim. The author also goes on to talk about the name al was and the, ble the blessings and the benefits of that. It shows that Allah Azrael also, He gives to whom He wants. Because He is al was He gives to whomever He wants. And that His knowledge encompasses everything and everyone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's quoting the statement of the Prophet, um, uh, where, the, where the Banu Israel, they said that we want a king. We want you to select a king for us, and then we'll fight under the leadership of this king, and then we'll be victorious. And so that prophet says, are you really sure you want this? Are you actually sure you want Allah's religion? They said, yes, yes, of course, why wouldn't we fight in Allah's cause? We've been oppressed, and we've been kicked out of our homes, and we've had all these bad things happen to us. So then the prophet comes back after receiving a revelation from Allah, and he says, Inna Allah qad ba'ath malika. Allah himself has chosen Talut and sent Talut as a king for you. They said, how come Talut will have kingship over us? We deserve kingship more than him. He has not been given a lot of wealth. He hasn't been given vastness of wealth. Now, linguistically, you could use this one of two ways. You could either say that he just doesn't have vastness of wealth and we have a lot of wealth. So again, this this kind of arrogance that we have a lot of money and he doesn't have much. Or it could be this kind of phrasing to say that he doesn't have much, he, he doesn't have vastness of wealth, meaning he's very poor. Like it's a form of um, hyperbole in a sense. That it's almost like saying he doesn't have vastness, so therefore he is extremely poor and he has, he's stricken with poverty. Then the Prophet responds back, Dunnun, uh, I believe, he says, Inna Allah astafahu alaykum. He says, Allah himself has chosen him to be a king over you. And he has increased him and given him a lot of knowledge and physique. <coughs> so what is their response? Remember, their response is that we should be given the kingship, which is bizarre, because they're saying, how, we want a king to be chosen over us. You go ask Allah, you just go off and do your job. You go ask Allah to choose a king for us and come back and tell us who the king will be. And they're expecting he'll be one of them, one of us big shots. We are the politicians. We're the Senate, we're the committee, it'll be one of us because of course we're descended from important people and therefore we deserve leadership and we have a lot of money and so they're thinking it's going to be one of them. And he comes back and he says, it's none of you guys, it's somebody who you don't even think of. It's Talut, somebody who you don't think of at all. And they said, how come he doesn't have anything, he doesn't have vastness, right? So the Prophet's response is firstly, he says, Allah has chosen. Remember who you're disagreeing with, not me, I'm not an important person. You're disagreeing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah astafa ma'alib. Right? And also when the, when the first order came, he says, Inna Allah qad ba'atha alib. Qad, qad ba'atha lakum ta'alut amalib. It's Allah himself who's done that. But the point, the shahid, yani, why are we talking about this in this chapter here, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just out of him being al wasa it's not just him giving money. It's not just him giving the, the finances. It can be anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as a lot of blessings to anybody. So therefore the Prophet's response is that He has given him a lot of knowledge and he has given him a lot of physique, physical capability. You want a king, you want somebody that you can fight under and remember all these you know, movies that we see how people used to fight in the old days, they have to get out on the battlefield and there's a lot of confusion. You want somebody who is big and tall and strong on charge, that person is the one who's going to be in charge on the battlefield. And not only should he be physically strong, because they have to wage war hand-to-hand -hand combat, but also you want somebody who is mentally capable and understanding of the strategy and the tactics of how war is done. And so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Qalud and the Prophet talks about the wasir, the vastness of how Allah Azzawajal has chosen Qalud because of certain characteristics that he's given. So again, that's what the scholar is talking about, which is to say that al wasir subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just about money or power or those things. It can be in anything. And this is something amazing because it's 
we should understand that Allah Azrael has given each and every one of us a lot of gifts in some arena. Somebody might never get sick. And he might not think of that as a blessing because he just doesn't think about it. But he meets somebody who gets sick often, right? So therefore Allah Azrael has given that person a lot of blessings in the fact that this person just doesn't get sick. He doesn't have health problems. Whereas somebody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a lot of money. And this person might not think of his money as such a big deal because he just has a big bank account and it never bothers him, right? Whereas when he meets somebody who's poor or somebody who's facing that challenge, he would recognize that this is a huge blessing that Allah has given that person. Or somebody's always lived his life in peace and security and safety. He might not think of that that much, but again, turn on the news and you will find how many people live their lives and they have to go through horrible situations trying to get away from unstable political circumstances to get to a place where they will live in peace and harmony and safety and security, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, out of him being al wasa subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's given each and every one of us something, something amazing, something huge, some huge amounts of blessings which maybe we don't think that much of, but if we were to compare it to others, we would recognize really how much that is. Like the scholar said, they said that that health is a uh, um, uh, health, health is a crown at the head of every healthy person, but only the sick people can see that crown. Only the sick people see that crown that the healthy people wear. The healthy people themselves don't see it because they they have it all the time. They don't notice it, right? They don't notice that. So similarly, uh, this is, goes back to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wasi'a subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has given each and every one of us a lot of something. And so therefore we should be thankful and we should be praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Similarly, uh, on the flip side of that, the fact that Allah azawajal is al-wasi'a, but each and every one of us, we are very narrow in how we live our lives and we are only held accountable for what we can do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah Azrael will not hold anybody accountable except for what their capability is. So wusr in this sense means the capability of a person might only be this much. This is all you can do, that's all you're held accountable for. Right? لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اِكْتَسَبَتْ For them is what they did a little bit to achieve. <coughs> Just a small amount of good that they did, they get the reward of that. And what's held against them is what they worked hard to make sins about. Meaning, even in this phrasing, لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اِكْتَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اِكْتَسَبَتْ Shows that Allah Azrael is willing to forgive us a lot of our sins. Because it shows the difference between kasaba and iktasaba. That a person is working harder to make sins and so therefore Allah Azrael holds us more accountable for the things that we do purposely, intentionally, work hard on it, do the sin repeatedly and so on. Whereas the good deeds that we do, even if it's something very light, like the Prophet says, there's two phrases which Allah Azrael loves a lot. They're very light on the tongue and they're very heavy on the scale. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah in alim. There are two phrases that are so short and so light and so easy, yet Allah loves them a lot and they're so valuable. And they are, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, glory be to Allah and all praise and thanks to Him. And Subhanallah al glory be to Him, how great He is, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very light, very easy, very easy to memorize, yet Allah loves it a lot and accounts for Allah on the Day of Judgment. So these small, small things that we view as small, yet Allah still rewards us for that, uh, for uh, a lot for that. And also Allah Azrael, out of him being al wasa he wants good for us and he wants to make things easy for us. Allah Azrael says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah wants to make things easy for you. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِفَ Why? Because humans have been made weak. So Allah wants to make things easy for us because we are weak. Whereas for himself, he uses words like wasa and he uses uh, al-ghani, independent, not in need of anybody. But we are shown and we know it ourselves how weak we are and how badly we need him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, um, Allah Azrael, He is vast. He is vast in His mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah Azrael says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O my slaves, those who have done wrong against themselves, don't despair of the mercy and love of Allah Azrael. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah Azrael is willing to cover and forgive all of the sins as He wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ هُوَ اللَّفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Because He is all forgiving and all merciful and loving, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then of course, then the ayah uh, immediately after that shows what the solution for that is. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِكُمْ Turn back to Him and rush back to Him. And uh, so therefore, the maghfirah is connected with rushing back and making tawbah, turning back to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, we'll end <coughs> the chapter on al wasir subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there's any comments or suggestions or anything.
ayah of the Quran, they say, Wasi'a Kursi, Wasi'a Kursi, Wasi'a Kursi, Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, I, I like the contrast between uh, Wasi'a, you know, Wasi'a and Ghani. Mm -hmm. Wasi'a is the encompassing, yeah. which is like everything, and but not only Wasi'a. Wasi'a Kursi, Wasi'a Kursi, Wasi'a Kursi, meaning it's vast enough for all of that, but it's not only for that. <laughs> it means right. it, it can possibly even be more. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's open. Absolutely. And, and Rani almost, he doesn't need any of that. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you know, it's like the outside of us feel and the inside of us feel. Mm -hmm. like, it's really uh, like yeah, it's a contrast. Yeah. contrast. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's, it is very interesting, and that's why when you look at the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do have, several names have a lot of overlap in meaning, but there's always some difference. And like the scholars of language will say, I mean, in any language really, you rarely have two complete synonyms. You typically have words that have shades of meaning of each other, but then there's some cases and some circumstances when this word fits the context more than that word. Why is that? And that's when you really begin to appreciate the richness of the language and the, the richness of the people who think in that language. Which is why, like Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, he used to say that studying Arabic is part of studying Islam. Because therefore, he says that through that, you get to understand the depth of that Islamic concept, the, the mindset, really, of what it is the Qur'an, what is the seal of the Prophet, what it is that the Prophet came with. And of course, the more, I'm not saying that I speak Arabic anywhere near that level or anything like that, but the more that we study it, the more that we benefit from that, and the more that we you know, appreciate the richness and vastness of that language. Very good points to that. Uh, what uh, what other names most com uh, um, occur most common with like Wasia mm -hmm. I mean, you know, is, are there other is there kind of a pattern in terms of uh, the coupling of, of all those names? Yeah, there is Wasia and Hakima, and that's in Surah An Nisa, ayah number one thirty. And um, there's another quote that he has Wasia uh, and but that's not uh, the name itself there. So, Wasir and Alim, Wasir and Alim, and Wasir and Hakim is the other one that I see here. And I, he says that there's a few others, but he only quoted a few of them. Uh, we may have to look it up. Can anybody who is memorized, they can think of any book, any other connection between the name Wasir and another name? Wasir and Alim and Wasir and Hakim are the only ones that come to mind also. So there's a very interesting incident. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if the Prophet had used this word at that time. It was, at the end, it was kind of a little bit funny incident when a Bedouin came and urinated in the masjid. Yeah. And everybody jumped on him and he said, let him go. Mm -hmm. So at the end, the man, the good man, uh, makes a dua for the Prophet and himself. Yeah. But the Prophet turns around and says, you have narrowed it so much. Right. Allah's mercy is wasi. Yeah. Did he use that word? He did. That's, that's but at least he, he alluded to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. This is excellent, an excellent point. At the very end, that man, when he says that the Prophet didn't get mad at me, he didn't curse me, he didn't hit me or anything like that. And then so he says that, Allahumma ghfir li wa Muhammadan wa la taghfir ma'ana ahad. Something like that. Allah forgive me and Muhammad and nobody else. So the Prophet <laughs> said, You have made something which is very vast, you made it now. Right? So he used the word wasi as something which is Allah's mercy and forgiveness. I was not sure, but I kind of it guess is. that he must have used it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, it, and the opposite of that is biqt. So you made it too narrow. It's not like that. What words you use? So dayat is. Uh, no, in, in English, yeah. And uh, so he says that something which is very vast and limitless, you made it so small and so narrow and it's not like that. And that's also the Prophet وسلم, again didn't get mad at him. Yes. He didn't insult him or say, no, no, Allah is not like that and not like this and no, no. No, he said something, you made something very vast and you something very small. Yeah. So it is a very, I mean, you can derive, and the scholars have talked about this story in so many ways, and, but you talk about the leniency and the love and the kindness of the Prophet The forbearance. The forbearance, absolutely. When at the very beginning, he just comes in, he goes in a corner, he starts urinating, and the Sahaba said, we were ready to jump on him. We were ready to put him in his place. 
But then the Prophet said, let him finish. And the scholars talk about that too. And they said that, look, what's going to happen if suddenly a bunch of people come running at him when he's urinating? He's going to get scared and run and it's going to just be splattered all over the place. So instead, the Prophet said, let him finish. And then he said, and go get a pitcher of water and clean up and, you know, dump the water over there and clean up that area because of that. And so they derive fiqh rules about how to clean up. Then they derive issues about how to be, of course, the, the obvious one is how to be with a person who's new to Islam. And how to be kind and, and fair and loving the Prophet And also that the Prophet was a little bit tougher with the companions who have more seniority. More is expected out of them. There is more expected out of people who have experience of living with the Prophet And therefore he said, you go clean it up. He didn't tell the, the, the one who did the urination to clean it up told the ones who were already in the masjid and the ones who were ready to show their tempers and their strength, you guys have to go handle it. And the Prophet spoke to them. I'm sorry, yes. No, just to answer the last question. So, about seven or eight times there's yes. wasi on Ali, mm -hmm. and only one time wasi on Hakim, yes. and a couple of times wasi on Muftira and wasi on Rahman. Wasi on Rahman. Yeah. What is interesting is wasi on Ali, or the seven times wasi on Ali. So many times wasi on Ali. So Ali, mm -hmm. the best. Ali is, is very frequent, it's like yeah. seven or eight times. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, he, yeah, but he used Wasim al-Makhtar So in this uh, phrase is Wasim Ali, Wasim Hakim. Mm -hmm. So Wasim is used as an adjective. It looks like that it's used as an adjective mm -hmm. rather than the, the word. Yeah. Yeah. Is it not true? Or? In the law? Because uh, he's talking about Wasim Ali that he's, he's very vast in his, in his mm -hmm. ilm. Mm -hmm. And he's you know, vast in his wisdom, Wasim Hakim. And Wasim al He's yeah. vast in his, in his uh, forgiveness. Right. So Wasi is used as an adjective, it looks like it. No, I, I don't think that's the case because in the Laha Wasi'un, that in, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So you have uh, Muqtada and Khabar. In the Laha Wasi'un, so this is information about it. It's not necessarily an adjective. Uh, it's, 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 it's not an adjective. Yeah. It's not an adjective for Allah Alim or Allah Wasi'un, no. when, when they both have Tanween, Wasi'un and Alim. They both and have the same uh, yeah, the position same in the sentence. Right. Wasi al maqtira means his maqtira is the described by being wasi. Because one has the alif lam. Wasi al has the same the equal the same level of description as wasi al alim. Mm -hmm. So in wasi al it is adjective, but not in wasi al alim, wasi al alim. No. A good word uh, defining it. I, I saw it. In Three, three, four ayat mm -hmm. in Abdul Halim's translation. Yeah. Pervading, ample, and limitless. Okay. I really like limitless. Yeah. Because That's true, yeah. Limitless is, is yeah, that's yeah, a very good to all. Sure. Almost. Like in the finite? Right? Infinite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Limitless, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, comment or suggestion you want to make? طيب إن شاء الله دمجوا أنت جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم.